What are some of the developments around ESIM and ISIM growth? So at the moment, what we're seeing is a, it's an expansion in the availability of IoT modules for LP1. Mm -hmm. uh, I think also one of the really interesting areas is new references around NTN. Uh, uh, availability of those, and we're seeing some references on integrated SIM, which is uh, are driving some of that growth. We're also seeing with the SGP32, the IoT RSP standards coming in, driving a lot of interest about how organizations can take uh, advantage of that. In terms of integrated SIM, we've got organizations like Sensos, who have a smart label, who are coming to market, and we have other design-ins, which is stimulating further growth from organizations. And we're also working through some of the changes around the business modeling and operational models around integrated SIM in particular, which will accelerate and enable companies to access the technology and get to production faster. And will the eSIM standards bring any benefits for those who want to adopt iSIM? Very good question, actually. And, and yes, uh, it's, a, it's a very good point because the standards will allow that control point to move to the OEM effectively about choosing when and how they want to get the profiles onto the particular device specifically. So all of that's driving a lot of a lot of engagement. And the other elements around that that people don't perhaps see is that you can actually, with integrated SIM, the way the production and operational flows work is that you can actually load the profile in a non-secure environment, which is kind of a game changer because it allows that flexibility to OEMs to actually engage with the technology and give them greater flexibility to get yeah. to the market. Yeah, that's great. And what is Keegan doing to drive the growth of the ISIMS uh, standards towards mass market? So what we're doing is we're driving and underpinning the disruption of, uh, of the ecosystem and bringing the ecosystem together. It's a very complicated one where you have silicon partners, module partners, uh, you've then got uh, connectivity partners, systems integrators. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a whole uh, plethora of e ecosystem partners and obviously ODMs and OEMs is a key part of that and we're driving that. Underneath that is now uh, hardware, EV case modules coming to market, which makes it available to people to actually design and develop on. Yeah. And on top of that, we've got organizations like Noi Labs who are bringing uh, sort of software platforms that work on top of this hardware at the moment. So there's an awful lot uh, of, of innovation that's, that's coming through. Yeah, a lot going on, yeah. And how is Keegan's ecosystem standing up support for companies innovating around ISO? And I think the, the strongest answer around is around education. You know, we've got innovation coming, the technology, the benefits are integrated similar there in terms of, you know, it's a, it's a smaller bomb cost, you've got more resilience, the, the supply chain becomes a lot simpler, but we're still finding that education is the key element. And tied into that is security, because 81% of OEMs, uh, uh, execs, are effectively saying cybersecurity is really important. And one of the elements that very often gets overlooked is I can't see an ISIM, so I think it's a soft SIM. And uh, an integrated SIM is a standard-based hardware solution. So the education is around those developing their products, that they're using the right kind of products using tamper-resistant hardware solutions, and they're making sure those are aligned to the risk management plans of the OEMs. That's really important. And then one of the pieces we're really starting to see is around that expansion of working with ODMs, those that make... Uh, devices for other organizations and that educational piece of learning. So organizations like Flex, very large ODM, are using integrated SIM uh, as on their platforms to help customers get to market faster.